because you are you are sure and you are aware of what triggers whatever emotions there are in you. And only then will you be able to take responsibility for your responses and your actions to whatever situation you may find yourself in. And indeed, that would lead to growth. So always understand why you're behaving the way you're behaving. And again, think about the results you want to get. That will make you more responsible for your emotions. So you don't throw them all over the place, especially so in a love and a home situation. in all aspects of your life but because we focus on home and you know love and other amorous relationships would rather pin it there good morning to you once again if you're traveling this morning we say traveling mercies for you if you're working out and listening to us keep safe If you're in bed and you're cuddling, we say good for you. If you have had to run around to take care of a very important situation, like probably going to the hospital to take care of a family member, or deal with any situation at all that's not so pleasant, we pray for grace and mercy for you. Grace and mercy is what we pray for you. In all things, remember that you're more than a conqueror. God's got you. And thank you. And through it all, you still find time to tune in and listening to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for production and welcome to the show. interesting conversation coming up for you finding love after 40 years let me push it down a little to like say 35 right how different is it how easy is it how much more su successful is it when you find love after 40 or um, is it more difficult? What considerations go into that? It will be very interesting to know. So this morning, my guests, I will introduce them to you now so we get into the conversation. But it's a very, it's a very interesting conversation. Now, I have Albert Papakwisi Kumsin. He's a businessman and an evangelist. He will be sharing his experiences with us. I also have Edem Atifo, if you like, call him Miyahima. That's how I like to call her. Um, Echo Foundation, she's the founder. And then... Phoebe Besemete, Family Life Counselor, will also be on Zoom to share some thoughts with us for men and women who are over 40 or 40 and above. But like I said, I mean, um, 35 there above is also very important to find out because 
Um, we have a lot of people sending in messages to us. You know, 35 still single, what do I do? 40 searching for love, what do I do? And it's interesting to know that even at age 50, we still have people who are very hopeful and searching for love. I have a friend who just says that if you're at that age and you don't have anybody in your life, just give up already and focus on other things. But how do you just give up on finding that very important aspect of life, you know, having somebody in your life? And if all things work well, you're married to that person, you build companionship, you have a good relationship with a person. I think it's a beautiful thing that everybody must desire and nobody um, should be told that your time has passed. And so it's very interesting that we have, you know, a man and a woman way in that age with us. And then we will also be speaking to um, Phoebe as well to look at some of the considerations. So Mia Hema and I'll bet you're welcome. How are you this morning? We're doing good. You're doing great. Good. Thank yeah. you. I'm doing well. Ahead of that conversation, I'd like to remind our audiences that um, Home Affairs is brought to us by Amasha Partners Limited and IK. Yum Vita, a delicious way to grow. Dano Milk, choose Tasty Milk, choose Nourishment, choose Dano Milk, Dano Milk, go for it. Thank you so much for banking on us. Now let's get into it. 40 and above. Why... I mean, like I said, a friend of mine says that at that age, if you don't have anybody yet, you should just forget about it. But should should that be the case? Should we just forget about finding that person when you are, say, 40 and above? Adam, let me start with you. Okay, you relax. Let me start with um, Albert. Thank you very much. Please get closer to the microphone for okay. me. Thank you. Well... 40 and above, or finding love at 40. I don't think you should give up finding love at 40, or if you are older than 35. Even if you're a woman, I believe at any age you can find love, except if you don't want to. Okay. And for men, I think it's even easier to find love oh really yeah why how so um i believe finding love is in what you do is in what you do that makes you find love if you make yourself lovable you would find someone who loves you for what you are so it's more about you and the way you project yourself the way you carry yourself about, the way you relate to people, especially of the opposite sex, if you're a man or a woman, that makes you become lovable. And of course, someone somewhere will find you lovable enough to love you. So I believe at any age, you can find love. So we shouldn't give up on it at all. Nobody should give up at on all. it. At all. Okay, great. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> yeah, Adam, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's been a while. I know, right? <laughs> yes, I think uh, everybody deserves to be loved. Mm. First of all, um, I always tell people, I always say that if you really want love, it comes from you first. You just have to love yourself. Mm. If you love yourself, somebody would love you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we think that, oh, someone should love us. We are looking for love. Yes, we are looking for love, but have you been able to even love yourself first before somebody loving you? Mm. So I think that if you want love, everybody wants love. Every everything, even animals, they want love. So we 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 after forty, you want love, yes, but you have to love yourself first. Great. So love doesn't have like time frames and you know time bounds for as long as you are alive and you desire it you should be able to find love yes but you're saying that it starts i think that's what the two of you are saying it starts with you now let me find out um does it become easier to recognize that love starts with you because of maturity yes i think so mm. um when we were kids you know the kind of love we desired at those times when we were kids 
this, this is not what we desire now. At this age. At this age. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what we want is somebody who understand us, mm-hmm. who make you feel special mm. because you are special. Mm. And then who love your passion and go with you. Mm. Okay. Who is not going to be a standing block and say, no, at 40, you're not telling me that. Don't go here. Don't do this. I mean, like, as if, you know, he determines or she will determine whatever you want to do. Mm. But then, even if it's not, it's not good for you to go, the way the person will, will talk, say will say it and convince you and not order you, but convince you for you to be convicted, be convicted that, oh, yes, it's true. Um, I, I don't, I, I, I shouldn't go. Yeah. Yes. So, you, it depends on how. So you need mature people around you. That's up to <laughs> you. Ah, I love that one of them. <laughs> At that age, you're not a child. You're not a child. And you don't want to be treated like a, a child. child yeah. You would have lived, you know. At 40, um, some people may have been in relationships and come out. Some people may even have been divorced yeah. and come out and have experienced life. And so what Adam is saying is that at that point when you come into my life, you should know that I am already a made person. And what you probably are desiring at that point is companionship. Yeah. Not somebody who is now coming to order you about Friends, it. Friendship. Friendship. I mean, it's more of having a friend mm. than having a lover. Okay. Yes, it's more having a friend. And you, 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 it's, you should, I would say you should marry your friend, not your lover. Mm. Because I think that love is not a feeling but a choice mm. yes so oh i feel i love you no i'll make i'm making that effort to, to love, love you. you that choice I, I don't know if you understand yes, so you, you make because when you see somebody in your mind this is the choice I'm, i'll make that effort to love you so when the person talks to you one or two like oh okay let me give this person a okay. chance I'm not saying I'm feeling. I'm giving you. I'm. Uh, I'm making that conscious effort to be in a relationship or to make that feeling, you know, complete. So I think that <laughs> love is not a feeling. This it's is really inter- a choice. This is very interesting. <laughs> Albert, what would be your thoughts on that? It's interesting, but that was the very thing I was going to say in a different way. Okay. I believe that um, as you mature, mm-hmm. especially when you go beyond it when you are young you take so many things for granted Mm. so maybe between the ages of 20 and 30 you can play around and of course have a lot of experiences some of which might be good some of which might be bad but i believe that when you cross the age of 40 35 you become mature so you must look for commitment and not love wow i believe that yeah it's good to look for love but it's better to look for commitment and that's what she was talking about Commitment is, is a, um, I try to look at the meaning, it's, it's the state or quality of being dedicated to a course or an activity. Dedication to a course. So love is fleeting, like she said. It's just a feeling that is fleeting. It comes and goes. And, and so if you go out looking for love, you might find love, but the love might not last mm. if it's just what you're looking for. But if you're looking for commitment, someone who would commit themselves to a relationship and say, yes, I want to be in this relationship with you, you might have your flaws, you might have your shortcomings, but I'm ready to make it, for us to make it together. Everybody has their flaws. In the same way, I mean, you must accept your friend or your partner's flaws, just like you have yours, and they should also be willing to accept yours. And in commitment, build the relationship together get to know each other but not just out of love because love can fade how love is fleeting how important is trust in in this kind of relationship listening to what you two are saying you're not really out there looking for the feeling of love like oh i've seen you and i have butterflies in my tummy and i that's not what you're really paying attention to um you're paying attention to friendship you're paying attention attention sorry to commitment and adam said that this is not the time where i need somebody to come and be 
I mean, necessarily directing my path, but um, maybe a bit of, you know, guidance and trying to understand why I'm doing what I am doing and supporting me. Mm-hmm. And so where do we place trust in all of this? Is it very important in this kind of relationship where you're on a rebound? I think that trust is very important. Mm. Um, coming from my background, when, when I, I'm in a relationship like being a divorcee, um, you need somebody you can trust. Somebody um, you can share your pain, your fears, everything with. And then have that trust that that person is going to be with you and understanding all that. Now, people say, I don't trust you because you lied to me. Uh, I, I sometimes find it a bit trivial when it comes to, oh, he just he or she just lied. It, it's beyond it. Once in a while, we tell petty lies, oh, okay, I'm, I'm coming or I'm sleeping or, okay, I'm not be able to come, but I'm, I'm here. I say, okay, I don't trust you, no. It's beyond that. You see, that's where you find your friendship, you know, that friendship you have. So I think that first of all, you need somebody you would trust with your life. You would trust with all that you have. That when you even hear something, you say, no, I trust this guy will not do this to me. I trust you. But first of all, I always say you need to trust yourself first. Mm. You yourself, do you trust yourself? Sometimes we look, I always say that everything starts from you. you. If you're able to trust yourself, Adam, let's say that um, somebody comes to tell me that I have stolen the bag. You know that, you and them know that there's no, no way you can, you and them can steal a bag. So you don't even have that intention that I'm going to steal the bag. Mm. I, I don't know if you yeah. understand. Yes. So for me, I think that I have to trust myself first. Know my strength, my weakness before transferring into the other person. Mm-hmm. If I'm able to do that, I know that, oh, I can do this, then definitely the other person will do it. But if I know I can't do it, I know he wouldn't do it. So even if he does it, in my mind, you, I can't do it. So, okay, unless he comes out to say, oh, I've done it, then I know you are, I'm going to put you in that bracket now, trying to figure out the sort of person you are. Then I know, okay, if he's capable of doing this to me, then I have to start looking at the sort of person I am, you know, putting my trust in my choice of loving that person. Into. I have a, a, a question, right? Um, so you would have come from a certain background. I mean, in your case, for instance, yeah. you've been married, you've been divorced, and probably met one or two other people, even in, you know, within the period. And if you're going into a new relationship now, this other person, looking at your background, okay, this person has these experiences, has this, has has done this. Um, how serious is this going to be? Because um, they have seen and known it all. Yeah. You know, does it does it make it more easy or difficult? It's it's more easier because when um, if you are coming from the background I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what I've been through, why I came out. I've gone through the mill by trying to get rid of my bitterness and my pain and everything. So getting to know this other person, in my situation, I'm going with a blank sheet. It was another person I had that experience with. So I'm not having it at the back of my mind that the fact that this person drinks tea like this and looks like the, the other person who was drinking tea to me that hey, he's not like the other person. No. I'll give a b- b- clean shit. But when I start seeing signs, I'll just step aside. Are you no more cautious? Um, because, you, like I said, you're coming from a certain background. You've probably met one or two other people along the line after coming out. You have established yourself doing your own work and control on your life you have established yourself you have relationships um, you have things going for you and then there is now somebody that you will have to pay attention to who will 
for lack of a better word again, alter your life in a certain way. Alter your life because the person is also coming in with their own expectations of you. Yeah. And this is a grown a grown human <laughs> being. Like you can't teach me anything. You know? How easy does it become no, no, dog no, no, how easy does it become <laughs> to start backing down on on what you have become? Just so you sacrifice and compromise and please this person to be in a relationship. It shouldn't be difficult for you. Okay. It, you shouldn't be so cautious. You know, it shouldn't be very, it shouldn't be difficult at all. Because you start seeing because you are matured enough, mm-hmm. you start seeing the signs. Okay. So and I told you that it's a choice. It's mm. not a feeling. Mm. So the moment mm. you start seeing the sign, I mean you we are like, okay, so this is not the choice for me. Let me just back up. It shouldn't be easy, it's difficult at all. It'll be difficult when you you are stuck. Oh, okay, I'm going to give this a try. And this is all I want. I don't have any choice again. I have waited for so long. I want to marry. So let me stay with maybe we change. Then you have that mindset of when you were young. But if all you want is I want a companion, I want a friend, I want a relationship before marriage. It's not necessarily you really, really want that person to marry you, but it should lead to it. So it should be very easy for you to say, okay, I thought I could have you, but unfortunately, the signs I'm seeing, it's, 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 not, it's not worth it. So you just calmly, gracefully, just step aside and then move on. Look, we are playing two fishes. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> you I definitely get it. I feel like <laughs> at that level, you're, you're so liberated that yeah. you're just, you know, yeah. no, you're not good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it's the same for men, too. Um, okay. Before I come to that, I wanted to add something to the trust question that mm. you, uh, you asked earlier. You know, I believe that. Every relationship requires trust. More so in a relationship that would lead to marriage. If okay. that's the intention, then trust is very important. I'm looking at this table in the middle of, um, or right in front of us here. I can see three stats, and on top of the stats, or the stands, lies the flat part of the table. The three would stand, for me, would be trust, love, and understanding. Mm. And then commitment, is what lies on top of it that keeps it stable. So once there is no, like a table with three legs, most tables or stools have three legs. If one of them is broken, the stool would not stand or you can't sit on it. Mm. In the same way, if there's no flat part of it that lies on top of the three legs, you can't sit on it. So it's like that. I see trust, love, and understanding as the legs on which every relationship should stand and then commitment lies on top of it to make it comfortable and good to sit on so really so when, trust, you, when you become committed it means that you are now stable the stability in the relationship once you're able to find commitment yes okay. it gives the relationship some stability because you're committed to it and you are you're not ready at it. you're working at it it might be it might be shaking a little bit here and there, but then it's stable. You're it committed keeps, to making you're committed it. To making it. To holding it in place. Exactly, okay. that is it. I get so it. now to the other question you asked about being cautious for men, it is so important. I think it is because especially, you know, that's where you find the commitment. You can't find someone who's committed to a relationship if you are not cautious. You have to look carefully for the person that would be your friend, like Adam is saying. Because it's not everybody who wants to be your friend. You have to choose your friends. And your friends would also have to choose you. So you might choose somebody, but that person might not want to choose you. And so that person cannot be your friend. Or you might think this person could be my friend, but the closer you get to know the person, you think, oh, I don't think, um, sorry. I mean, of course, when it comes to marriage, marriage is a completely different thing. You know, so yeah. That person can be your friend, but at the point you realize, I can't go into a deeper relationship with this person that could lead to marriage because maybe I can trust the person. Trust is earned. You have to make yourself trustworthy so that somebody can put their trust in you. If you don't make yourself trustworthy, 
I won't be able to trust you. So if I won't be able to trust you, I can't make you my friend. You can be just a friend by name or hi, hi, or a colleague at work. Even at work, it's not all your colleagues who are your friends. Some of them are good friends because you resonate with them at a level that goes deeper than just being a friend or just saying hello. So I think caution is very much important. Like she's saying, you are at that point, you've seen a lot. You've met a lot of people. And so you have to be quite choosy and selective in your relationships. Great, great. We have um, some questions um, and some comments coming up on this conversation. I'm excited about this conversation and learning a lot, actually, because um, you kind of feel that at that level, you have, you have fully arrived. Um, love is not a choice, as Adam is saying. You don't choose whom you love. That feeling has its own brain. However, you decided um, who you want to be with. That is a choice. Okay, I'm not getting... <laughs> not getting it's the same it. thing. <laughs> so it's a choice. You can love somebody, but choose not to be with them. Okay, yes. I agree to that. Yes. So at the end of the day, it There's is still the choice, choice, you see. Same way you can choose to be with somebody you don't love. It's still a choice. Yes. Love is important in finding a union, which I think we all agree to. Mm -hmm. But when you find it, let reality guide you into making the final decision. For reality is what is lived, not love. Oh, that, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay. a, that's a good one. So, Adam, I, I, good I, one. Yes, I just want to, you know, at, at the age of 40, mm -hmm. if you're also not careful, a lot of people from the women's side will take advantage of mm -hmm. you. Because they will think that, yeah, you... you you, you are now desperate mm -hmm. for a relationship or mm -hmm. to settle down. Mm -hmm. So you meet somebody who, first of all, will see you and if you chit chat, they will start saying that, oh, I want to marry you. You know, and then you're like, okay. In, in some cases, you see the women are like, oh, yeah. Then they, they, just, they just go jump in, into they it. just jump into it. So around for this, I've realized that this is what men think, oh, she's over 40, yeah, she's she's divorce or she's single she has kids she's an old chick she can, she's an old <laughs> chick so i can have my way you know and it's the young the younger ones they like that too much they yeah you know i, I don't know it's it's, it's it's kind of now some some things that is going on the younger guys are now attracted. Attracted. You older women they're older i'm surprised wow. i don't know it's they are always after the older one. And you know <laughs> that the older men are also going for the younger people. <laughs> we need to research it. Yes, it's true. Certainly. And I've mm -hmm. had countless times. I'm like, ah, yeah. you know, and they always want, they, they, they think they say things to get your attention. Oh, the woman to say, I want to marry you. And quickly the women are going to it. And unfortunately, some women fall into it because one they really think that look i need to settle down after 40. i mean i really really need to settle down so that's where they get it but if you are somebody who you are really really mature you really made it not as it like you you're okay yeah you as a friend you want so for me when you come and you start marriage i'll look at you no you're not for real you're you not for real because how okay because in my mindset i want a friend I want a companion where it'll come naturally that we are friends now it's okay we want to settle that it'll come naturally but don't impose it on us that because we are 40 and we need love and yes we are lonely oh, so dear. quickly you want to come and occupy certain space it, it, it'll be very difficult ah, this is a very interesting conversation <laughs> honestly I will be come, I'll be going on to Zoom to have um, a chat, chat with Phoebe on some of the things. But before then, let me remind us that Dano milk is always, always very good for you. So this morning when you set out and you go to town, remember to grab Dano milk, which will help you enrich your breakfast with the nourishing goodness of 
that's Dano Mill Cool Cow Instant Powdered Milk. Remember, the rich taste of Dano Mill makes a perfect combination with your tea, your oats, your cocoa, and it gives you that great tasting breakfast you've always desired. Dano Mill Cool Cow is fortified with vitamin A and it's also a good source of protein and nutrients such as vitamin B12 and iodine to help keep you nourished and strong always. Dano Milk is affordable and in a shop near you. Dano Milk, choose Dano Milk today for your nourishment and build your strength every day. Dano Milk, go for it. This advert is FDA approved. And hey, where were you yesterday? from 8 a.m. through to, you know, about 6 p.m. thereabout. We were at the Tema Municipal Assembly premises doing Habitat Fair. And so today too, between 8 and 6 p.m., the team will be there. We're there again tomorrow. So yesterday 15th, today 16th, tomorrow 17th. The Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair um, is pitched. You know, we have pitched camp at the Tema Municipal Assembly. Um, for exhibitors, we have real estate developers, developers, finance companies, you have insurance and land vendors, you have providers of housing accessories, home appliances, furniture, home security, and roofing, among other building materials. It's interesting how you can go there to check out some of these things and then you come back home with lots of giveaways. You don't want to miss that. And you can go there with the family today. the children will be a good spot they may just be able to help you choose some very stylish you know homes or you know places that you might want to live in so go with the whole family and make that decision together if you want to be an exhibitor of any of these things it could be that you have lands you're selling um your real estate developer um you provide housing accessories home appliances furniture home security roofing and anything that's connected to housing you just might want to call 0540-110-389 or 0244-260-653 numbers again 054 zero five four zero one one zero three eight nine or zero two four four two six zero six five three just call and some of our team members will answer and they'll tell you what you can do to be <coughs> able to exhibit you can actually still do that today and tomorrow is not late the ecobank joining is habitat fair is in tema and this is in partnership with ecobank the pan-african bank and the planned city extension project from cities and habitats and sponsored by elegant homes where quality meets value global lighting your solution to quality lighting syntax tank a year strong a year tough gold key properties building prestige since 1997 springfield estates where dreams are built a virtual security complete security solutions dbs your roofing experts virtual infosec africa security solutions by design saints gobain making the world a better place clifton homes beautiful homes wise investment and the kensington heights airport kumasi by hdg homes limited so you want to make your way to tema municipal assembly municipal assembly premises today and tomorrow 8 a.m through to 6 p.m for the echo bank joy news habitat fair hi phoebe are you there can you hear me Hey. Yes, I'm here. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're finding love at 40, you know. 
Um, you want to get into a committed relationship at 40. And we're learning a lot. Nyahima um, is in that, you know, bracket. Albert the same. And I don't want to ask them whether they have found love yet or they are still looking for love. I don't want to ask that question. That would be prying too much. <laughs> but they are in that bracket, you know. And... I mean, I, they have told us that it's important that at that at that level of your life, you're looking for friendship. They've mentioned that trust is also very important. You're not looking for one who is now coming to control you and direct your path. But, I mean, give you a lot of support as well. Um, they've said that it's important to have commitment at that level as well. And... and um, Mm -hmm. Adam also mentioned that it's very important for women not to be desperate at that level because when you're desperate, then it means that you can attract just anybody and just anything. And anybody who comes your way, you just jump at it because desperation is what is leading, you know, the charge. So it's important to know yourself, be sure about yourself, love yourself, and know even why you're looking for a companion at that point. I want to find out from you. What should the considerations be? I am 35, I am 40 and above. Could be that I have been in a relationship before, even a serious one as marriage and divorced. Could be that I haven't been mm -hmm. in any. You've just had some failed, you know, um, relationship. So you haven't been in a very serious, committed relationship as marriage before. But yeah, you've been with somebody, it didn't work out. Be with somebody, it didn't work out. And then, you know... You're, but you're open to still being with somebody. What should the considerations be? That's a very good question. And thank you so much for inviting me. Good morning, Miyahima and Alvis and all our listeners. Good morning. And it's very interesting that we are having a conversation this morning. I've had at least two people who are above the age of 35 reach out to me. And I've had this, we've been talking about it this morning. Mm -hmm. And um, there are not a lot of considerations, but there's something I would want to hit on um, towards the end. And I believe Albert mentioned the issue of trust and commitment. And Mia Hema was saying that, you know, we shouldn't be desperate. We shouldn't look like, you know, without a relationship, we can't survive. And she's looking for friendship. What I'm hearing from both of them is a level of maturity and self-awareness. They have lived life. They know who they are. Mm -hmm. They've made their mistakes and they've come into a full acceptance of who they are. And so for anyone who is within that age range, the beauty of it is you've had a host of experiences. You have the blessing of time to get to know yourself. And it's something that you shouldn't sweep under the carpet or underestimate. It's something that you should fully acknowledge and embrace. Because that self-awareness, that self-knowledge is going to help you to determine exactly the kind of relationship you're looking for and the kind of partner you want in your life. Because I said, as we were saying at this age, nobody, my friend is saying that we ain't got time. You know, we're not wasting our time. We need to know exactly what we're going into. And that's why I like the emphasis on commitment. However, there can be a few challenges because of the the varied experiences we've had. And one of the things that a successful relationship requires is interdependence. The challenge is that when we've, you know, we've grown older, we've learned to live by ourselves and become self-sustainable, it can be very challenging to even consider the source of depending on somebody else for anything. And that is one of the characteristics of love. As much as it's a choice, it requires certain elements to succeed. And so you can't be an independent person in a relationship. And so you need to cultivate some level of vulnerability towards that potential partner that you're speaking to. But first of all, we have gone through all the analysis. We have realized that this is someone that we can consider spending our lives with, but we shouldn't hold ourselves back. What a lot of people sometimes do is we end up self-sabotaging. Because even though that's the thing we really desire in our lives, what usually may happen is because of our fear of disappointment, because of the memories of yesterday, because of our uncertainties and our insecurities, we may end up pushing our way what could be considered a good opportunity to find love. 
and security and special with that person. And so we need to bear that in mind. And that's one thing I wanted to really hit on, that the older we get, and with, even though we gather more knowledge and wisdom and understanding of ourselves, our environment and people, which is one of the blessings of being older, we also have to be careful that that knowledge doesn't cause us to stumble over our, you know, our desires. We shouldn't hold ourselves back because we know too much. And so it requ- it's a very delicate balance, and we should, that's why I said, we have to have a sense of vulnerability, and we have to also be willing to try, even though sometimes it can be scary, it can feel scary. I literally had about a 30-minute conversation with a lady this morning, and she's in a relationship that looks like it's going to be quite successful, and she's so scared because of her past experiences. And, you know, as we're talking, she realized that, yeah, I am trying to self-sabotage. And I said, you know, the thing with relationships, especially at the beginning, you can't really tell where it's going to go. But you have to also learn that you have learned something over all these years. You have to trust your instinct. You have to even trust your need. You have to understand that at some point, you sh- you must be able to know that, no, I know what I want, and I want to give it a go. And so these are some of the things I also want to chip in. There's so much more, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that age make you more vulnerable? It doesn't make you more vulnerable. I think it makes you more cynical. Exactly. Okay. And we are jaded by life experiences. So you actually have to make an effort to be a little more vulnerable with the person that you're with or you're considering. Okay, can I say something about vulnerability? Yeah. I believe that being vulnerable does not come with age. Even when you are young, you could be vulnerable. And you make yourself vulnerable. Depends on what you think about yourself. If you are not confident, if you don't know what you want, of course you're vulnerable. Then you don't, anything can come to you. And anything, you will take anything at all if you don't know what you want. So I think at that age, you're only vulnerable if you don't know what you want. If you're not, you don't know yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't trust yourself, you're not confident in yourself, and especially you don't know what you're looking for. That's when I believe you become vulnerable. I, I, I also think another way that, I mean, you being vulnerable to somebody, you trust in the person. I mean, you trust the person mm-hmm. that you become vulnerable in his, in, in his space. So let's say, you are in his house. I mean, you know you trust him. So you are vulnerable. Then, I mean, another woman comes and come beating you up. And yeah. Home. You understand? At that particular time, you are so vulnerable. You you trusted him. So you've given him your all. So I always say that, look, I will make that cautious effort to be vulnerable in your arms. I mean, you, me being vulnerable means that, look, I have made that choice to love you, to give you my all. I mean, your space. Um, that security, I have that security. Um, I'm I'm so secured in your sp- space. So I be- I believe I become vulnerable at that particular point. Is when um, I don't want to be vulnerable. I come to your house, I'm sitting mm-hmm. down. Even when you give me water, you know I'm so rigid. I'm so careful of my security. You, you know. But you are so relaxed there. You know you trust him. He can't harm you. That's that, at that particular point, I believe you are vulnerable. Well, I want to believe that once you have agreed to be in a relationship, yeah. a little bit of vulnerability is good. I mean, I mean, it will come. It will Natural. come naturally. Natural. That's you it. understand yes. until Natural. until you're hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Until then, they show you. <laughs> Also, yeah. they try you. <laughs> then that, okay, I've got to get my girls together exactly. and, and not allow myself so yeah. much. Because, like you're saying, if you're already in the relationship, yeah, yes, yeah. you've got to, you've still got to keep your antennas up because, exactly. I mean, you're dealing with human beings mm-hmm. any which way, mm-hmm. you know, but you can't be stiff. But I'm talking about, do you become vulnerable in such a way that you feel like a prey to men or to women because they know that Especially when they know your intentions. They know that, like, there's a lady here who says that she's 38, she's very single, never been married, n- no kids. She runs her own business, and my social life is not good. 
I go from home to work <coughs> to church. It's that bad. I have signed up onto a dating site, but the people who approach me don't want same things. Any ideas or help with finding someone? This is Nana. Um, okay, single lady. Not like this one, right? Once you sign up to a dating site, mm -hmm. and Tell people know that you're 38, mm -hmm. and a lady has signed up to a dating site, mm -hmm. you become like vulnerable yeah. to vulnerable them. Yeah. They feel yeah. like you're desperate. Yeah. And so everybody would want. That's the kind of vulnerability I'm asking, I'm okay, asking so about. That. Yeah. So if I can come in at yeah. that point, they think you are vulnerable because you've come out to say you are 38. You are very single. You don't have a life. So and you want like, somebody. You want somebody. So <laughs> they think that oh, this lady is vulnerable. I'm going. But until they get close to you, mm -hmm. realize that look, um, you are not what they think you are. Mm, so the moment we put ourselves out there, for me, a lot of people think when they see me, they think I'm very vulnerable. Hey. <laughs> but when you get close, you realize that oh, she's not that what we think but to her i think that you should have a life you see not i have been in that situation before not because you see we think that going out should be with somebody mm, somebody mm. i can get up right now and go and watch a boy white myself have a good laugh buy chichi and got you and come back home and come back home and you have you feel very fulfilled exactly. i mean uh go for life band go and dance grab a guy dance with the person and say okay bye-bye okay. like, ah. that's it exactly <laughs> yeah you know you sit by the table take a bottle of that's right malt mm -hmm. you'd finish drinking it mm -hmm. before you get to the uh, 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 the dancing floor you look around you see a guy sitting down even with a lady it's exactly. excusing can i have a dance exactly. with you guys okay you get you dance dance sweat and then thank you <laughs> and then you go yeah. you feel fulfilled so that's if you have that kind of life um you are happy so you you get to places and you make friends mm -hmm. you try and then network go to church make friends sometimes you even have a friend oh can we can can i have lunch with you mm -hmm. on on me the person like hey, the girl is vulnerable no you go you have the mm -hmm. lunch you finish and you're like okay thank you and then he start chatting you mm -hmm. realize no this is not a i thought that's it. You see, so then you are gradually attracting the kind of people you want in yeah, your space. So. You see, it's work, oh, Adam. It's <laughs> work. I mean, if you want to, um, you Adam. have to be happy. I'm yeah. coming with you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I do. Adam, oh, wait, I think I need to clarify what I mean by vulnerability. You know, what I was trying to say is that sometimes by virtue of the experiences we've had, Sometimes we tend to harden up yeah, against people because, you know, you've been hurt, you've been disappointed, yeah. you've been betrayed, whatever it is, you've had bad relationships. So sometimes what happens is we automatically try to safeguard our emotions mm. and ourselves against, you know, potential attacks. Mm. However, when I speak about being vulnerable, it's about exuding some level of softness towards that person mm. and also opening up yourself to the opportunity to love someone else. Now, when I mention self-sabotaging, what some people do is, because like I said, because of some of these past experiences, even when there's a good opportunity in front of them, they run. Mm -hmm. They are afraid, they put up the walls and immediately know, I don't yeah. want to know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking to those people who could be listening right now that, you know, in order for you to have the opportunity of meeting someone mm -hmm. and getting into a relationship and having a successful relationship, there is some level of vulnerability that you have to do towards mm -hmm. the person or towards that potential person. Because you need to get to know each other. If you put up your walls, you won't know each other on a genuine level. And that's what we are aiming at. Obviously, we have to be cautious. We shouldn't be too open and too, um, should I say, giving. We have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. However, if you are considering that person seriously and you're having a great conversation, do open up, do get to know them. Mm -hmm. And eventually, who knows, it will work out. But if you close yourself up immediately because you're afraid or you're feeling insecure, and that's why it's so important to work through all these emotions, which is what I liked about what Mahima said, that she had worked through all the things that she's been through, she had let it go, she, she's in a very good place emotionally and you know very healthy. Then what happens is then these things don't tend to cause you to stumble. 
Because the issue with self-sabotage is that it's not that someone is trying to destroy your family. You end up standing in front of yourself and, you know, just um, avoiding those very positive opportunities. And that's what I'm just encouraging people to be aware of so that they don't call off those um, most potential partners that could actually, they could have a great relationship with. Phoebe, I understand you perfectly, and I think that you and you all understand too, right? Yeah. yeah. I also want to add something yeah. about the vulnerability in the sense that, you know, you have to even know your level of vulnerability. You have to know, you have to open up, like Phoebe is saying. If you don't open up, you will not receive anything. But then, yeah. opening up, you must know how open you are. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't open yourself up to anything and anybody. That's why I said you... Yes, a level of vulnerability should be allowed because if you don't open up, then no one can come into your space and you would not even also mm-hmm. afford yourself the opportunity to go into any other person's space. So, yeah, vulnerability is, is allowed and you must know yourself. You have to be confident in yourself to know how much you are mm-hmm. ready to take and what you are not ready to take. Yeah. And, and Adam, to add to it, Charlie, yep, no, we want love. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I, I can say this, but at a point in time, you also want a friend. You want, you, you, you yeah. want to be loved. Exactly. exactly. So if you are too rigid and mm-hmm. trying to mm-hmm. be calculated, mm-hmm. you are not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> because the people you are attracted to, every woman or man mm-hmm. have the ideal man. A woman, ideal person. She, ideal person she in wants. Mind. That's in, it. She wants yeah. to. That is knowing what you want. Knowing what you want. That's yeah. It. So and when you have your five, you know at it. least four, three, exactly. even one cry. I can't have a cry. We like. <laughs> 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 yeah. You yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I always say, open up, mm-hmm. feel free. Yeah. Try and explore. Ex, of okay. course. Maybe like 78. Make I yourself like, lovable. Yes, That's make yourself make yes, yourself lovable. lovable yes. Open up to love somebody. It's true. Yeah. Show love to other people. Yes. And when you show love to it's like giving. You will receive what you give. Yes. Yeah. And you, you say you can't give what you don't no, have. You don't have exactly. So if you don't have it, of course you can't give it. Yeah, it's true. But once you're ready to give love to somebody, once you show you meet sometimes even not you might not be looking for love from that particular person Mm -hmm. you might just be ready to give that person some love and in return you realize oh i'm getting love from this person so then we come to the choice of then you decide whether you will give that person a chance or not (laughs) it doesn't feel like a very beautiful place to be what like being mature and now you know you're mature you're not desperate and you're you're open for a relationship. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like a very beautiful place to be? It is. And then you have no idea. <laughs> it is because at the end of the day, you 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 control everything. Absolutely. It's yes. so beautiful. It is. I it mean, is. It it, is. yes, it is. I think at that point, you are in control of, of yourself. yourself. Yeah. You are in control of your thoughts. You are in control of your space. You know, you are not dependent upon someone. Yeah. You know, and you think. You know what you're looking for. That's yeah. also a very important yeah. thing. So when you're in control, I think it's good. It's good, yeah. You you don't, open, apart yes. from being controlled, I you're think open-minded. It's a, exactly. I mean, if you're exactly. really open-minded, mm-hmm. I mean, you... Like you can go and grab somebody's guy of and Of course, and then dance with the person. Somebody everybody. has beaten you before. <laughs> <laughs> I asked permission from well, the lady. Of course, oh, can yeah. I have a dance with the yeah. guy? Yeah. You know, the, yeah. guy too, the guy is shy, the lady is shy. <laughs> oh, why not? I dance as well. Thank you very much. Wow. And, you go and then you are so relieved and then you sit in your car and then you drive home. You get home, you will shower and then off to bed. Yeah. But I want to believe that, I mean, because we've heard a lot of these stories that it's, also, it's not also that rosy. I mean, I hear uh, that a lot of people at that level cry a lot in oh, their yeah. beds. And I mean, you show all the strength and all the, you know... You build all the walls during the day and want people to know that, yeah, I am in charge of this situation. It doesn't matter whether I have somebody or not. I love myself. I have come into full awareness of myself and blah, 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 and all that, and you're trying to be. But I hear that a lot of people cry yeah, silently yeah, in yeah. their beds and wish that they really had somebody. Adam is very true. Oh. I always tell my friends that, look, <laughs> for you, 
at least you have somebody to talk to and the person will say it's okay mm. but you sleep with your pillow and your pillow will not even talk oh. <laughs> all your pillow does is to suck the, the tears and you not even say it's oh, okay dear. yes and you, we won't for me i won't deny that fact mm. that it's very very lonely at that particular time where sometimes you just need somebody to encourage you and say it's okay I mean, you, you, you feel in some part of your life or you just, sometimes you need somebody to talk to and you have nobody to yeah, talk to. Yeah. So, yes, it's there, but what will you do? Mm -hmm. You just wipe your face, mm -hmm. thank your pillow and say, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for soaking it in. Thank you for soaking it in it and let's move on. Yeah. Okay, so um, it doesn't mean you have to be desperate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really mean you have mm -hmm. to be desperate. Mm -hmm. It's part of it. Some are in a relationship and they wish they had that pillow, the pillow to only soak their tears because mm. every time they are crying, they are slaps or emotional mm. uh, abuse. Okay, so wherever you find yourself, I mean, take the opportunity, the positive side of it. Just wipe yourself, pray to God, God, today I'm going out. Let me get somebody to smile with. Let me get somebody who will later take my number and say hi. Okay, and then chat with. And then you move on. Because, see, Adam, life is beautiful. Until you get to our age, you don't know that life is so beautiful. Mm. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And love is sweet. Oh. So, Charlie. We will not give up. We will not give up. 0302216541. It will be interesting to hear um, what some of you have to say. We have a bit of time, so it will be interesting to have uh, to hear what some of you have to say while i wait for your phone call let me go sell this and come back for just a minute in life choice is good but choice plus safety is way better your safety and comfort is paramount under the cylinder recirculation model you can buy lpg in a safe environment all cylinders are inspected and maintain to the best safety standards so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. Different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder Recirculation Model. Securing your safety creating more jobs a message from the national petroleum authority under the patronage of the ministry of energy all right thank you very much the lady in my studio didn't say that she was single and was such you know it's a message that somebody sent to us so says that adam um let me click on the message <laughs> <laughs> and um, the lady in your studio saying she's single, please send her number to me. I want to be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you see, they've started. I've started getting numbers. <laughs> 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 you have something else. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, I suggest. That, okay, no, this is not the message. Adam, the two single guys there may click for. Adam, do something. <laughs> if they are both single, indeed, I'm enjoying the views. <laughs> the, the views are clicking. You know, Alex and Yeah, I'm. I'm also. Enjoying Enjoying the fact yeah, that we're having yeah, yeah. a very relaxed conversation this morning, you yeah. know. Uh, life is not that hard. Every time, problem, problem. <laughs> nah. Um, this one says that this is good discussion. I am 46. I want to settle down now. Please connect me to Nana who said she's 38. <laughs> hey, wow. Connect me now. <laughs> it's good. I, I mean, you I, never know. I said what yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hey. I think it's, 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 it's a good place. Hey. You know, it's a good platform also. The connection side. Oh, yeah, no, you never know. Uh -huh. You never know. Okay, hello, good morning. Good morning, Adam. Yes, how are you? I'm fine, Adam. How are you doing? I am good, thank you. What's the name? Kwamina. Okay, Kwamina, let's have your contribution. Come again. Let's have your contribution. Yes, I, I tuned in just like about 20 to 25 minutes ago, but there was one lady speaking and then she's out of her heart, like she's saying everything real. And I appreciate what she was saying. 
Okay, so Hello. That's, that's all you want to say, huh? Yes, and she 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 gives you the appreciation that you should be free with your heart. You should explore, though, but don't get naughty or nasty somewhere. But at least if you explore, you get to know yourself, and then you are in control of everything you are you are doing. All right, thank you very much for picking that up, Daniela. Do we have another person calling? So yeah, um, so I mean, you you're telling us that at forty and above, we shouldn't give up on love, right? No. Okay. While we okay, let me take this one. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. You're on there now. What's your name, please? Yes, my. Let me just be with you. Say again. Yeah, good morning. My name is Reginald. Okay, hi, Reginald. We're listening. Yes, and I want to say that, you know, a majority of people listening, I'm sure, are within the bracket. Um, so let's say, um, and these are people who um, are hurting, like you said, or people who are having problems in this area. And... I feel that the way around is that sometimes, you know, people don't know what to do in such a situation. And that is where it becomes a problem. Now, what I feel most people must do is that, you know, you need to identify what the problem is with you um, at that age. And then you would know what to do. You know, there are times when people find themselves in a situation where they... Um, because they don't have money, they don't have anything, or maybe they have one shortcoming or the other, um, maybe in terms of being beautiful or handsome. So they find it very difficult you know, to find someone who they can be with at that age. That is a major problem. Okay, I, I get what you're saying, but that wasn't, that wasn't the focus, mm -hmm. you know. I get what you're saying, and we appreciate it a lot. Maybe some other time we want to have a conversation around why people... Um, sometimes it's just a choice, you know, that people would want to remain single. Um, it isn't always because there is a problem. That's how come we're asking how difficult or how easy it, it is to have a relationship at that level. Sometimes it's not always a problem. Do we have another person on the line? Okay, I think that we'll, t we'll just wrap up. And so, Miyahima, I'll give you like 30 seconds to wrap up. You, Adam, and then I come to Phoebe, and then we'll be gone. But it's been a very interesting conversation. Um, yeah, it has been. So, I'll start with you, Miyahima. Okay, so if you, 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 you want love, first of all, as, as I said, love yourself. Open up, feel free, and then have fun. I mean, don't throw yourself in a box thinking that somebody will come and lift it up and say, hey, I, I found I my found love. I found you. No. Like that song. But mm -hmm. you just make yourself available. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go out there. And you two search. Mm -hmm. You search, you get. Sure. Yes. <laughs> so don't box yourself up. Don't Open yourself, up. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that, like, the gentleman who called, you will have to be ready to find somebody mm -hmm. and then the challenges when they come you begin to face them exactly. but until you find somebody you don't even know what challenges there are right yes and from you albert well i want to say um the bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing so you have to go searching for the men you have to go searching till you find but you must know what you want and you must be ready to 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 open up and give yourself time till you find what you want and don't don't also use that to take advantage of other people. people men do that a lot because in our culture particularly we are the ones that go proposing sometimes we use that undue you know advantage to 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 